upon you 
you. We ask you, God, help us here right now in this time of service. Oh, God, to reach out to you, to focus everything we have upon you. Oh, God, we hunger and thirst after you, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, come and fill, fill the atmosphere, God, of each and every individual, of each and every person, Father, that is here, that is viewing, that is a part of this right now. And Lord, we believe you're going to do powerful things in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we're so glad that you are with us here. We want to encourage you to continue to support UPT through your giving. You know you can do that if you are in Charleston through coming to the church where uh, the, both the offering and tithe boxes are secure and checked regularly. Come, drop your offering, drop the tithe, uh, and worship the Lord that way. If you're unable to be here because you're not in town, then remember UPT. Post Office Box 272 in Charleston, uh, 61920, and continue to support the work of the Lord. Amen. Today's a day of worship, and did you know that the Lord is seeking after you? Have you ever seen that, that old um, propaganda photo of Uncle Sam? Uh, and they, it said, Uncle Sam wants you. And it's got that picture of patriotic Uncle Sam, and he's pointing like this. He wants you. Well, that was the government's way of letting the world know and the nation know that you're important. We want you to do your part. Well, today I could say, uh, uh, if, if you can imagine just for a moment with me, it's like the Lord is looking down at you, like Uncle Sam, minus the hat perhaps, looking down at you. God is seeking for you. God is seeking for something from you today. And in John chapter 4, when the Lord Jesus had a very powerful discourse with a woman at the well, he said this. He said, the Father seeketh such to worship him. Today, your heavenly Father, your creator, your shepherd, your savior is seeking you. It's as if he's got his finger pointed and saying, I want you. You right here to come into my presence, to come and to worship me. I want you, elementary age children, to come into my presence and worship me. I want you, person that doesn't have all the answers, you don't know anything about me or about my word, but today I want you to come into my presence and to worship me. He is seeking you today, so let me reassure you, it doesn't matter where you are, you can worship Jesus in your living room, uh, in the atmosphere where you are, even through just holding Holding a phone, but would you do that today? Would you answer the Lord right. seeking and would you worship him? It's a day of worship. Yes. So I encourage you, stand up, rise up where you are. We're going to continue to sing and worship. You join in because All God's right. presence will fill your atmosphere if you invite him in All and right. worship does that. So join with us again. We are glad you're here today. Let's get in. Let's worship. Let's get a hold of every good thing the Lord has for you today. Amen.
our hands, our feet, whatever you want to call them. And then he ate uh, and he was devouring that nut or whatever he was eating. And I, I was thinking uh, about the fact that I've never noticed how fast a squirrel eats. And he was just eating away. And the point of bringing up the story of the squirrel is, um, you know, heretofore, before this, this what we're going through, I, I never thought about so much our touch points. But I watched the squirrel eat with his hands and then he got down and walked and, and um, you know, he wasn't concerned about his touch points as some people out there aren't concerned about where they touch and what they touch. But uh, that squirrel is a rodent, and we're not rodents. And, but uh, the point of that saying, the, my point today is what he did, he did quickly. I thought about the squirrel. Is, 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 uh, does he realize that he has just a short life, and he's got to eat as fast as he can, and he's about his business? And I just had some crazy thoughts. I thought, you know, maybe in heaven the squirrel will slow down, and, and the hummingbird will slow down so we can capture its beauty. Wow. And the sloth will speed up. <laughs> and I don't know what it's going to be like in heaven. I just want to be there. Amen. It's going to be perfect. Amen. And what a world it is going to be. What a world the Lord has in Amen. store for us. You know, uh, the other morning as I was going to work, um, and I was thinking about the rapture and thinking about the goodness of God. And, and as I was driving to work, the sun was beaming down from heaven through the trees. And it was like a heavenly moment. You know, our life is just filled in this earth with glimpses of heaven and glimpses of hell. And uh, I'm thankful that what we see and experience right now is only temporary. We're, we're, you know, we, we, and what we've got to do in, in, in getting our soul and our heart ready, we need to do quickly. Right. We need to do quickly Amen. for our redemption. I want to read a scripture to you that I've read uh, in, in the beginning of this, this uh, uh, pandemic that we are in. And Luke, the 21st chapter, verses 25 and 28. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations. Does that sound familiar? Yes. With perplexity. That's, that's being in a quandary. The sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Oh, we sing about chains are broken, and we sing about looking up to, to our, our, where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. Oh, we need to look on Him and look to Him and not after the things of this world. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your hands for your redemption draweth nigh. For your redemption draweth nigh. The Amplified says that there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth there will be distress or trouble. Trouble will be in the earth. Trouble and anguish of nations in bewilderment and perplexity because they're without the resources they need. They left wanting and embarrassed and in doubt, not knowing which way to turn. Does that sound like where we're at today? Yes. Yeah. At the roaring of the of the or the echo of and the foaming of the sea. All of these things. And, and you can look at their scriptures that prophetic scriptures that talk about this day. Men swooning away or expiring with fear and dread and apprehension and expectation of the things that are coming on the world. For the very powers of the heavens will be shaken and caused to totter. And then shall we see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and transcendence and overwhelming power and all his kingly glory and majesty and splendor. Hallelujah. Now when all these things begin to, uh, are drawing near, when they, they begin to occur, look up, look up, lift up your hands.
because your redemption or your deliverance is drawing near. Yes. You're delivering yes. all the yes. troubles yes. and the cares. Like one song said, we'll soon be done with troubles and sorrows. We'll soon be done. It'll all be over in a, in a moment's time. So what we do, we need to we need to be conscientious about our soul, our eternal part of our being, and get ready, All hallelujah, right. to meet the Lord in, in the air. Amen. I shared with you these scriptures at the beginning of this pandemic, and in the spirit, and instructed instructed you to sing and to rejoice right. because your redemption is nearer than ever. And the Holy Ghost said to worship and praise him through it. Worship him and praise him through it. Worship him with excitement because of what is coming. Oh, not to be not empathetic for those uh, that are lost, uh, uh, that have passed, uh, that have expired, uh, are lost their jobs, uh, but because uh, that Jesus is coming and our redemption is nearer than ever before. Amen. Because of the distress that the nations of the world are going through, the quandary that they are in with this coronavirus, the loss of lives, the economic uncertainty. I listened to a man that had recently been in UN meetings with leaders from all over the world. And these leaders listened to a man with a solution to this problem. And all of those world leaders were ready to pledge their allegiance to a one world system to stem the spread of this deadly virus. I listened to people on the radio today talking about uh, the fact that uh, before we start up, before we do this, or before we gather together in a stadium, or this, or that, or the other, we have to make sure, we have to know that our families are going to be all right. So the man with the solution just dropped over 100 million of his own money to the WHO to come up with a vaccine. And uh, Microsoft has a coding system to insert in everyone to assure that they have had and received that vaccine. And uh, they would not be able, it was said that they would not be able to come out of their house if they didn't have the vaccine. When you see these things and hear these things take place, what should we do? Should we start, you know, like, like the squirrel rapidly biting and chewing our fingernails and freaking out? No. He said, look up. Look up. Lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Get up. Straighten your backs and your shoulders and rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because every day that we live, we nightly pitch our moving tent and days and day a day's march closer home. Yes, we nearer do. home. Amen. We nightly pitch our moving tent a day's journey Hallelujah. nearer home. A day's march near nearer home. We're closer than yes. we've ever been before to the catching away Amen. of the bride of Christ. Amen. The rapture of the church. And oh, hallelujah. Amen. That ought to get you excited yes. Yes. and thrilled yes. and, and, and fired up in your spirit Amen. to be about the master's business and to tell others that Jesus is coming. All right. Jesus Amen. is coming. Amen. Jesus said men's hearts would fail them for fear from looking after those things that are coming on the earth. That, that, that means they would be looking after with negative expectations. Negative expectations. They would be obsessed with it and yeah. possessed with it, worrying about it and thinking oh, continually on it. And yeah. what, 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 are, what are they seeing and hearing on the news? All of these things uh, when, when they, they, they're just bothering them and it's worrying them and, and they've got it all the time on their minds. But Brother Clay told us the other night, get your mind off COVID. Let's have church. Get your mind off all of these earthly temporal things. And let's get our mind on that which is eternal. And get all excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. And joyfully welcome his return. Jesus is looking for a bride that has made herself ready. That's not going about grumbling and murmuring and complaining about what we're having to go. 
come through. But there is rejoicing. There is joyful. Our bridegroom's getting ready to come Hallelujah. to take his bride away. Hallelujah. Jesus said, look forward to with great expectation in your full redemption. Hallelujah. We've been redeemed. Our spirits have been redeemed from sin. I've been redeemed with love divine. Oh, glory, glory. Christ is mine. My all to him I now resign. I've been redeemed. My redemption. But there's getting ready to be the second redemption. That's the redemption of our bodies. Hallelujah. From this old earth that we are living. Our mortal bodies are getting ready to be redeemed. Yes. Hallelujah. We've got the seal of redemption on us when we receive the Holy yes. Ghost. Yes. And uh, the Father yes. knows them that are His. Yes. Those that are sealed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you can get all excited about Jesus. Amen. Oh, the old song when the redeemed are gathering in. I, I like to bring up the old songs because they're so laden yeah. with, uh, yeah. with a, a powerful message. Amen. But oh, when the redeemed, I was singing that song. I am thinking of a rapture in our blessed home on high. When the redeemed are gathering in, how we'll raise the heavenly anthem in that city in the sky. When the redeemed ah, yes. are gathering oh, in. Yes. Oh, when the redeemed are gathering oh, in. Yes. Washed like snow and free from sin. Oh, how we'll shout and how we'll sing. When the redeemed are gathering in. There will be a great procession over on the streets oh, of gold. Yes. When the redeemed yes. are yes. gathering yes. in. Oh, what music, oh, what singing, oh, that city will be rolled when the redeemed are gathering in. Oh, when the redeemed are gathering in, washed like snow and free from sin. Oh, how we'll shout and how we'll sing when the redeemed are gathering in. Saints will sing redemption story with their voices clear and strong. Then the angels will all listen, for they cannot join that song. When the redeemed are gathering in. Oh, hallelujah. How we'll shout and how we'll sing. When the redeemed are gathering in. Hallelujah. Then the Savior will give orders to prepare the banquet board. Room when the redeemed are gathering in. Hallelujah. And we'll hear his invitation. Come ye blessed of the Lord. When the redeemed yes, are gathering in. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. What a time that's going to be. Amen. When the oh, redeemed yes, are gathering in. Amen. Oh, what music. Oh, what shouting. The song of the redeemed. The redemption story. Hallelujah. Of God's children praising and thanking Him for their salvation. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare to you from the beginning that this month is a month of miracles. Yes. Yes. We're going to be focusing on the miracles of Jesus that were not just something that are historical, but they're still happening here today. And they're still happening in our world today. They're still being manifest. Every miracle that Jesus wrought is still being uh, wrought in this world today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But the greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. Yes. It always has been and always will be. Amen. So about salvation is the process of redemption. It's the process of redemption. In which believers are delivered from the power and the penalty of sin. Restored to fellowship with God and made partakers of eternal life. Right. Oh, hallelujah. What a hope. Amen. What a hope. What a, what, a, what a merciful God that would do to redeem fallen mankind. Amen. Amen. It's more than a momentary event. Yes, it it can be said that Christians were saved at the time of the new birth. Are being saved. That means right now you're kept by the power of grace yes. from the corrupting influence right. of the world. Yes. Oh, that is a miracle. Yes.
to be kept from the power of this corrupt world in which we live. Only a God can do that. Only a miraculous intervention can make that possible. Amen. And in his future, we will be saved when they are, when we, the saints are, I will be saved when they're translated out of the world at the time of the rapture. Amen. Praise God. That's the next big event that I want to be ready for yes. and Amen. make sure I'm in the number of those that are raptured. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, oh, I, I want to be, you know, I want to be all about my salvation like that squirrel was about eating that nut. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to get it. I want to get it as fast as I can and make sure I get everything I can inside me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Because our time is running out. Salvation is the greatest miracle because it is eternal. It is the greatest because it matters more than having a miracle of provision, yes. a miracle of healing, or a supernatural event, intervention that defies the laws of nature. What good would a miracle be if God made you to walk and you were crippled and he made you to walk when there was no medical way that you could walk and, and, uh, and you didn't walk for him or towards him? Right. What good would that be if you died in a lost condition? What good would it be if he rained uh, uh, money down from heaven and and uh, you uh, gathered all that money up and you became so distracted with it that you didn't take time to tend to the needs of your eternal soul? Okay. It would be foolish. Yes. And Jesus basically said that there would be people that would do exactly that in our world. So... My main text for you today is a salvation text found in John, the third chapter and verse number one. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He was a ruler of the Jews. He was a religious man. He was a Pharisee and he needed more than what he had. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, well, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? How can this be? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. First he said, if you're not born again, you can't see. The next he said, if you're not born again, you can't enter. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? How can this be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? You should know these. You're a teacher of the law of God. Jesus was omniscient. He was and he still is omniscient. He knew who Nicodemus was and he knew what was in Nicodemus' heart. And Nicodemus had heard of Jesus turning the water into wine and other miracles, no doubt, that were not recorded. And Jesus he is also omnipotent. He exercises power and has the ability to, uh, to change the elements. He has the ability to change the elements. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. Jesus yeah. can do anything. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, miracles can happen. Amen. I need a miracle right now. <laughs> hallelujah. You need a miracle right now. If you've got a migraine headache, 
Jesus can heal yes. you Amen. of your migraine headache. Yes. If you've got whatever whatever your condition is, He can heal yes. you of that right wherever yes. you are. Yes. Hallelujah. He exercises power and authority over all of the elements. He can make something different than what it is. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus can do that. Amen. Right, right. Well, mankind can do it somewhat. You know, we, we've heard and seen how distilleries went from making liquor to hand sanitizer. And, uh, but Jesus can take a filthy drunk and make him a clean saint. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Nicodemus spoke diplomatically to Jesus. He was as like, you know, he's some foreign uh, diplomat from another country. Truly he was. He was the Lord from heaven. Just think the Lord came from heaven in flesh to speak to this religious leader and tell him what he must have, that he must have a new birth. Yes. And Nic Nicodemus didn't quite understand that. He spoke directly to Nicodemus and he speaks to you as well. In John 3 and 3, Jesus answered and said unto Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, I know your teacher come from God because nobody can do these miracles that you do. But Jesus uh, said, uh, uh, you know, maybe he wanted to see Jesus work a miracle. But Jesus got to the very need of his soul and said, uh, verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You wouldn't be able to understand the purpose and the reason behind the miracles anyway, unless you're born of the Spirit. Right. Right. Hallelujah. You just think it's all about the here and now. Okay. You guys are thinking it's about an earthly kingdom. But it's something eternal. Yes. It's, yes. it's something more than that. Yes. I don't want to just set up my rulership in this earth so that, you know, you can exercise power over other people. My purpose uh, is to give you eternal life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Nicodemus didn't grasp all that. Nicodemus, you know, he didn't understand why Jesus said you have to be born again. You know why all of us have to be born again, just like Nicodemus? Because the first birth didn't take, it didn't do, it didn't work. Because we're all born into sin. We're all sinners. And we need to be born from above. Right. We need to be born anew. We need to be born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Not just Nicodemus, uh, but uh, right. Jesus said, except a man. Yes. Man represents uh, mankind or all people, whatever the gender, right. whatever they call themselves. Amen. If they say they're no gender, they still need to be born again. Amen. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Most likely, Nicodemus would be a little bit larger than his mother. And uh, that, that would uh, be a pretty difficult thing for um, him to be in, to re-enter into his mother's womb. And that's what he was asking. You mean that, uh, that he had to shrink down to re-enter his mother's womb and somehow come out a new person? A sinless person who would never do wrong again? No, Jesus said, Nicodemus, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the natural birth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. Yeah. You must be, be, your spirit is spiritually, you are dead. Spiritually, every one of you out there, unless you've been born again, are spiritually dead. And you must be born again, born in the spirit. You must have spiritual life. And that comes when Jesus comes inside of your heart. Hallelujah. No, he wasn't talking about a physical rebirth, but a spiritual new birth. And I, I would read you a paraphrase about the whole encounter that Jesus had. But I'm going to pass on that. But you can re you know, you can paraphrase, paraphrase, make a paraphrase of the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus and apply it to anyone sure. in this day because it's applicable to all. They must be born again. Hallelujah. They must be born from above. Yes. The, the wonderful thing about the whole dialogue is that God communicates to us that it is his will and desire for us to enter and see or comprehend yes. to be a part of his wonderful kingdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's Praise what I take God. away from that. Amen. It's, it's all, you know, that God is, is, is inviting us Jesus. to be a part of his kingdom. Amen. To be a part of what he's doing in the earth. And what he's going to do forever. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. God wants us to have that experience. 
the experience right. of a new birth. Amen. Have you ever heard anybody say, I wish I could turn over a new leaf. I, I just wish I could start life all over again. I guess. If, if, you're, if you're alive and been alive for um, a very short amount of time, you've heard somebody say, I wish I could start off. I just regret what I've done, what I've been, right. all that. But you can start over Hallelujah. again. Right. You can yeah. have a new life yeah. when you turn your heart to Jesus. Yeah. And he fills you with his spirit. It makes you different. Hallelujah! A different person than what you were. Amen. Hallelujah. He takes away the things that you once loved and puts a new love yeah. in your heart. A love for those things that are not destructive to your soul That's and right. not detrimental yes, to your eternal does. destination. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This new birth are to be born again. Hallelujah. It's a powerful, wonderful experience that is for whosoever will. And it means to be born again. When the word again there, it means to be born from above. Born from above. You need yes. to, you've had a natural birth, Nicodemus, or whoever you are out there, but you need to be born from above. You need to have a heavenly birth. Amen. Hallelujah. You've had an earthly birth. And uh, that came, uh, uh, you are a descendant of the first Adam, who was of the earth earthly. But the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ, is the Lord from heaven. Yes. And you need to be born of his seed, yes. of the spirit. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. And when you do, you'll have a new life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise the name of Thank Jesus. Hallelujah. After Easter this year, I, I thought what Jesus said. What did Jesus teach his disciples and the apostles he had chosen and that he had chosen to start and build his church on the earth? During the 40 days from the moment he rose from the dead after he had arisen from the time that he poured out his spirit in the book of Acts. What did he teach them? Well, Acts 1 and 3 says, The former treatise have I made unto you, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and to teach. You see, Jesus opened up the understanding of Luke. And until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, after that he was crucified and Beaten on, uh, beaten almost to death uh, on with, with the cat of nine tails after his passion, all that he went through, um, and he died and was buried and rose again. He, after that period of time, for forty days, he spoke to them, and he proved himself and, and revealed himself to them by many infallible, that's undeniable proofs, being seen of them forty days. And what did he? What does it say? Speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Okay. He was instructing them what they need to do for him. Now that once they are born again, once they receive that spirit from above, he taught them how to build his church. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. All right. For 40 days and 40 nights, plus the three and a half years, he let them know, why did I do this? And why, why, why did I perform this? And he let them know about the Old Testament prophets and the Psalms and all of the things in, and the Old Testament that were written concerning him. He opened their understanding, Luke, he says, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. This is after he rose from the dead. He was telling them, everything I told you in the last three and a half years, this is why I told you. Okay. But they didn't fully grasp it. They didn't grasp the fact that he told them he was going to die. They didn't, they didn't grasp that. Matter of fact, Peter tried to rebuke him for saying that kind of thing. But Peter didn't understand it. But after Jesus rose from the dead during that 40-day 40 period, 40 period, then he opened their understanding okay. that they might understand right. the scriptures. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh that they might understand what he had spoken to them. Okay. He gave them revelation. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. You know, you just have to have a revelation of who Jesus is right. to really grasp who he is. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And I pray in the name of Jesus that the miracle of revelation will flood your heart and mind today about who Jesus is. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Remission of sins, removal of sin should be preached in his name. What was his name? Father? No. Father's got a name. It's a title. What was his name? Son? No. That's just a title. That's a title of what he was. The Holy Ghost. That he is a spirit. That, that was a title of his work in, right. in the way he moves in his church and body. But that wasn't his name. Right. What was the name that he revealed to us? The right. name of Jesus. Yes. All of his yes. disciples, yes. all of those apostles whom he had chosen... Yes. Knew who the name was. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. They knew what the name was. Yes. Whereby remission of sins should be preached. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yes. In all nations. Yes. Beginning yes. in Jerusalem. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem and tell you will be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, uh, and he blessed them. And he was parted out of their midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was parted up to heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. They were anticipating okay. the day when he would come back with his spirit and fill them with right. the power. That, they, that he told them they would be endued with to All be right. his witnesses. Okay. He made them to understand and, and they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Yes. He wasn't there in their, in bodily in their presence. He had gone up unto heaven. He wasn't totally there in, in the spirit realm like we know it today. Right. But they went and they waited. Hallelujah. Right. Yes. And they worshipped while they were waiting. Amen. They worshipped and they praised God and they continually went to the temple and they were continually in it, praising and worshipping him. He made them to understand what they couldn't before about the things written of him in the Old Testament writings and, uh, and uh, what it would take to be a part and to fulfill their New Testament responsibilities. Hallelujah. Right. Is anybody getting it today? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He made it clear. Yes. He made it clear. Right. They didn't make any mistakes. Right. When they preached the gospel Amen. the way they did. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. They were fulfilling Matthew 28, 19 right. and Luke 24, 47. Right. And they were fulfilling Mark 16 oh, and 15 God. and 6. They were fulfilling yes. God's uh -huh. words yes, to the T. Hallelujah. Luke also wrote in the book of Acts, in Acts 1, 4 through 9, um, and, and they, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. And Luke had said, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Here he says, but wait. Do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise yes. of the Father. Which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized uh, with the Holy Ghost uh, not many days hence. Uh, you'll be born of the water, yes. but you're going to be born of the Spirit yes. not many days hence. When they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom the kingdom to Israel. Restore again the kingdom to Israel. And he said unto them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power. Yes. You shall receive power after, after that the Holy Ghost is coming. You shall receive power. Do this, Dinah. You okay. shall receive the ability to be my witnesses and work for me. Hallelujah. In Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth, wherever you are on the earth, if it's the islands of the sea or Africa or Korea or South America or wherever you may be, Siberia, it doesn't matter. When you receive the Holy Ghost, Hallelujah. you receive power yes. to be a witness of God. Yes. 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 And when he spoke those things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And an angel came and said to them, Don't by send you looking up into heaven as if, you know, he said, that as you see him go up into heaven, he's going to come in like manner. Hallelujah. All right. Jesus told them, in essence, to sit down and wait. For the promise and they obeyed and this is how they occupied until the promise came okay they were continually in the temple worshiping and praising god yes, Amen. yes. hallelujah Amen. Yes. hallelujah yes. that was their priority uh -huh. All right. the first three days after jesus died and, and they felt god forsaken and they felt you know like we thought this was the messiah the one that we put our faith and hope on what did they do they went back to their old way of living. They went fishing. They went back to their old default setting. But when you're born again, you have a new default setting. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. What? Your default setting? The default Thank setting God. of somebody that's been born of the water and oh, of the no. spirit? Oh, it's worship God. and praise. Amen. It's praying to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's fasting and it's doing the things of the kingdom. Amen. I'm going to serve the Lord in gladness. I'm going to come before his presence with sin. I'm going to be thankful unto him and bless his name. For he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you do that, oh, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. When the praises go up, his glory comes down. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. What did they do? As it says in Luke 24, 52, they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, All with right. great expectation. All yes. right. And they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. And, and as a result of that, at the right time, the right moment, the promise came. Yes. In Acts 2, 1 through 4, I can have Bryson quoted for me. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Hallelujah. They were sitting and waiting. Hallelujah. For something from above to be born from above. Yes. Because their first birth wasn't sufficient. It, you know, it didn't matter, Nicodemus. All of your religiosity, all of your good works, those are insufficient. It doesn't matter. So and so, if you give 100 million to the WHO, are you, uh, you give all billions of dollars. And, and some of the, I read the other day where the billionaires of the world uh, are encouraged to give, uh, you know, a good portion of their money away in philanthropic charities. It wouldn't matter if they gave every bit of it away right. or if they're right. not born again. Right. Yes. Sure. That's insufficient. You're right. Money can't buy happiness. Right. And it can't buy health. Right. And it can't buy your way into heaven. Right. Amen. Oh yes, we're not saved by our good works. We're saved by grace through faith. Thank and that out of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Thank but that, that grace in us gives us a desire when we get the Holy Ghost to do good works. Right. Hallelujah. That are not going to bring us glory, but are going to bring glory and honor Amen. to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And all the, it filled all the house, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, yes. and began to speak with other tongues, yes. as the Spirit gave the, them the utterance, yes. as the Spirit moved in right. and through them. Hallelujah! Yes. They were born again from above. They were anointed and appointed to, to be witnesses for the Holy Ghost, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. They had the anointing and they were appointed. They were ordained of God. They fully understood what they were to do. 
because he opened their understanding. Okay. There were people there that, that day, on that day of Pentecost, that were there from different regions where they spoke different languages and they heard these Galileans speak in their own language the wonderful works of God. And they inquired about this strange new phenomenon that was taking place. They thought, man, perhaps these people are drunk. But Peter stood up and, and, he, and, and it was telling there were Cretans and Arabians and there were other people there too. And we do hear them speak in our tongues. The tongues, our, na our nation, that we, our yes. language, uh, the language from our re region, the wonderful works of God. Yes. And they were all amazed. And they were in doubt, saying unto another, What meaneth this? What, what is this all about? What is this strange phenomenon? Uh -huh. And others mocked. And they said, They're full of new wine. They're full, of, they're, they're drunk. They're, they're full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose or you think seeing it's but the third hour of the day, nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith the Lord God, I will pour out my spirit on all upon yes. all flesh, and your sons and your daughters yes. shall prophesy. Yes. Your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into the blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved because it is his will to save. Yes. Peter understood what was written in prophecy that was not understood by the religious leaders of that day because Jesus taught it to him and gave him revelation. Jesus gave Peter the keys to open up salvation to the Jews uh -huh. in the second chapter of the book of Acts. When they, in essence, uh, um, after he preached to them on the first, the first gospel message, he preached, in essence, he preached the first gospel message after he received the gift of the Holy Ghost. He was empowered from on high, right. from God. It was literally Christ coming into him yes. and witnessing through him. Yes. That's the only way we can do it, folks. Right. We've got to let Christ do it through yes. us. Right. It's not a, to bring glory to us. It's to bring glory and honor to him. Oh, Lord, use me. Lord, oh, work through me. Lord, speak to me to touch somebody today. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Because if I speak, Lord, it's just going to be words. But if you speak through me, you can take those same words and, and, and cause life to flow through them and healing to flow through them. Hallelujah. So do it, Lord, for your glory. But she, Peter had the keys after he was endued with power from on high. He was baptized with the Holy Ghost, born from above. And these Jews were inquiring about what's going on here. And he began to tell them, he just told them flat that you folks, you crucified the Lord. He was your Messiah. He was your hope. And you crucified him. Well, they, they, when they heard that, they were convicted. They, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? We've, we've committed a grave evil here, a grave sin. What shall we do? How can we get this right? How can we turn around and, and, and be different? And Peter said, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> then he said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. For the remission. Re repentance, Jesus taught them that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. And Peter knew that. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of sin. Yes. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. You'll be born Amen. from above. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You must be. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born must again. Be. Or you can't see or enter the kingdom of God. Amen. And he not only told Nicodemus that, but he tells all of you. Yes. He tells every one of us, you must be born Amen. again. And this is how you're born again of the water. You're, you repent of your sins or you turn from your sins, you turn to Jesus Christ, 
You're baptized or buried with Christ in a watery grave in the name of Jesus. And you receive the gift of his wonderful spirit. It comes inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. And just like the wind. You know, you know, you, you hear the sound there, but you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going, but you hear the sound there. When you're born again, there will be a sound. It will come out of you with a, a new language, in a new language. You'll hear the sound yes. from your Amen. own yes, indeed. of the evidence that you have received Amen. the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he said, to all that are far off, even as we need the Lord our God shall call, and many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly heard the word, received his word, were baptized. And that same day that were added unto them about 3,000 souls. About 3,000 souls. I want to let you know that, that God is still pouring his spirit out where thousands are receiving him. Yes. Amen. 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 Thousands, 5,000, 3,000, 7,000, 10,000, 78,000. All at God. one time. Praise there God. are reports of that happening in this world. Peter used the keys that God had given him in Matthew 16 to open the door of salvation for the Jews in Acts chapter 2, and the Samaritan in Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, and the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10. Uh, there was a very religious man named Saul of Tarsus who was a man that had, uh, had a, a spiritual encounter with Jesus. And he was born again. And uh, he was a persecutor of believers in Christ. But after he saw the light and was filled with the Holy Ghost, he became a witness for Jesus. Yes. He came to Ephesus in Acts 19. And he came there uh, to Ephesus while Apollos was at Corinth. And Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Come on. Hallelujah. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Belief is very important. You must believe in Jesus Christ. You must accept him. But it's more than mental assent. And it's more than a, a verbal profession. You must be born from above. You must do some works of obedience. You must be baptized in his name and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You've got to have the Holy Ghost to be sealed from on high. Paul yes. said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? That's a wonderful thing. He was, he was saying, hey, it's good that you believe. It's good to see what God's doing in your life. But have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said to them, we've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Okay. What are you talking about? And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then he said, then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. All right. And they spake with tongues, not their own language, not their own uh, natural tongue that they are accustomed to speaking. Right. But they spoke in a heavenly language that they had never learned before. Yes. And they Beautiful. prophesied. And all the men were about 12. The Lord from heaven is asking you today. He's asking you today. From, from me, his witness. Yes. And from his word that I've shared with you. God has a question for you. Have you received the Holy Ghost? since you believed? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Have you been born from above? And if the answer is no, this is the title of my message today. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Oh, hallelujah. Since the day of Pentecost, you no longer have to wait to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. You don't have to tarry yes. for this gift that God wants to fill you with today. Yes. And matter of fact, the Apostle yes. Paul said, today is the day. Now's the time. Yes. You need to get like that squirrel and do what you do quickly. Because in reality, your life is 
short like the life of a squirrel or like the life of, of a butterfly or a flower that quickly fades mm -hmm. or a vapor that you see going up and just quickly fades away. What we do about our salvation, we need to do quickly. Right. Just ask, repent, be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you can receive the miracle of salvation. You can receive the miracle of salvation. Hallelujah. The Old Testament says that uh, uh, in Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and are safe. In other words, run into the name of Jesus and you will experience God's salvation. You will be saved. To be safe is to be saved from all that's going on around you. From all the destruction and the wrath and all of the things that are coming upon this world. There's a place where you can run and find shelter and find safety. Hallelujah. That's the name of the Lord. Peter said after he laid hands on and told a, a, a lame man to rise up and walk. That was lame. And he told him to get up and walk. That man got up and walked. And then Peter was questioned, how did this man walk? How did he do this? Was it by some, your own power or your own holiness? Peter said, no, it wasn't by anything that I can do. It wasn't by my name. It wasn't anything but the name of Jesus. Yes. It's by the name of Jesus. And then he went on to say in, in, in Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved Amen. oh have you been saved have you been born again of the water and of the spirit oh you need to call on Jesus today you need to find a place in your home make an altar in your home and say Jesus come into my heart Jesus help me Jesus let me be born from above let me experience that experience because I want to be saved from all harm in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Jesus.
wants to come. And yes, a miracle can happen. You don't have to be right here in the building of where we are. When I was reading of Jesus and his miracles, that he performed it as he was here on earth. He was out and he was walking. He was among the people and the miracles were received as he was out among the people. The Holy Ghost was poured out in the upper room. I'm telling you today that wherever you are, Jesus Christ is right there, right yes, now. He wants yes, to work a miracle for you. Yes, if you need healing, you can lift your hands right now. Yes, and you can just begin to speak the name Jesus. I may not be able to touch you today, to lay a hand on your head. But I can, from this pulpit in this place, I can begin to speak the name. Thank you. 
you for the anointing of God that has rested on your word. And I thank you for your promise. I thank you that you have said that you would come and you would meet us where we are. And so I ask you right now, in the lovely name of Jesus, that Lord, you would reach all across this community today. But I ask you that you would go overseas to our overseas listeners today that are a part of this service. I ask you today, God, those that are all across the United States that are tuning in right now, I ask that God, your spirit would begin to settle down in their homes and those that are hungry would receive you today. I ask you today, let healing virtue flow to those who are sick. I ask you today to bring peace and comfort to those whose minds are troubled today over turmoil and torment and um, financial changes in the status in their life. And God, I ask you for those who have lost jobs, those who have lost family members, I ask you to send out your peace. And I ask you to send out your comfort today and minister in every life and in every home today. We ask it in Jesus' name. I feel Jesus here, and I know that he's with you wherever that you are. We're here. If you need us, reach out to us. If you want someone to pray with you, if you want someone to repent with you, if you want someone to baptize you, let us know because there's no greater miracle that you can possibly receive than the miracle of salvation. There you cross as you wait for the